carbohydrate or carb counting keeps track of the number of grams of carbs in all your meals, snacks, and drinks, and helps you match your insulin dose to the food you eat. For optimal glucose control, it is important to understand how the quality of carbohydrate affects your blood glucose levels. Carbohydrates give you energy and should not be avoided if you have type 1 diabetes. Not all carbohydrates affect your blood glucose levels the same way. The more refined the carbohydrate, such as sugar, the faster the release of glucose into the bloodstream, causing a spike in blood glucose levels. This can result in poor blood glucose control. Starchy meals with fiber release glucose into the bloodstream at a slower rate, providing stable glucose levels. Animal proteins like chicken and fish do not affect blood glucose levels. Dairy products and plant-based proteins such as beans and lentils contain both proteins and carbohydrates and should be accounted for as a part of your total carbohydrate intake for a meal. Fiber is known to slow carbohydrate digestion and glucose absorption, leading to better glucose control. Small changes such as eating brown rice and whole grain products can help increase your fiber intake. Fat does not convert into glucose, but slows down the rate at which carbohydrate digests. This keeps blood glucose elevated for a longer time. Note that fat is also very calorie dense. Therefore, excessive intake of high fat meals can result in an individual gaining unwanted weight. There are two types of carb counting. Basic carbohydrate counting involves following a meal plan with consistent carb distributions from day to day. A carbohydrate exchange portion list will be made available for ease of meal planning. One should keep strictly within the number of exchanges as prescribed by the dietitian. Two, advanced carbohydrate counting is ideal for individuals with type 1 diabetes on multiple injections of rapid acting insulin or insulin pump. Steps for advanced carb counting are as follows. Step one, weigh your meal. The more weighing practice you do, the better you get at estimating the carbohydrates. Step two, check your pre-meal glucose level. Step three, determine the bolus insulin required for meal using insulin to carbohydrate ratio or ICR. If your ICR is 1 to 10, 6 units of bolus insulin can cover 60 grams of carbohydrates. Step 4. Determine bolus insulin required for correction using your insulin sensitivity factor, or ISF. If your ISF is 3, it means that 1 unit of bolus insulin is required to reduce blood glucose levels by 3 millimoles per liter. For example, to reduce your glucose level by 6 millimoles per liter, from 13 millimoles per liter to 7 millimoles per liter, you will be required to administer two more units of bolus insulin for correction. Step 5. Inject bolus for meal and corrections. Step 6. Eat. Click here to watch the first video, Knowing Type 1 Diabetes. Click here to watch the rest of the videos in our Type 1 Diabetes Animation Series.